Hey guys, what's up? It's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we're going to talk about training fire departments. So I've been training fire departments for 16 years in the local area of Columbus. I'm now in charge of Washington Township, which is Dublin, Jackson Township, which is Grove City, Violet, which is Pickerington. We've done a lot of online coaching with like Queens, New York, and a lot of other departments. So let's get to what I think you need to be a great fireman. The first thing you're going to need, and like I said, you, this is like beating a dead horse, is you're going to need strength. You have to be super strong in order to be a fireman. Now, a lot of people would argue that fact, but at the end of the day, if you're stronger, it makes tasks easier. And here's the deal. When you're walking into a fire, let's assume you're not wet, the sprinklers haven't turned on, you're still carrying anywhere from 50 to 70 pounds of gear into a fire. That means that just walking on a treadmill or being an average uh, fitness level is going to be a huge issue just based on the fact you're carrying another 50 to 70 pounds on your body. Now, not only is this 50 to 70 pounds extra weight, it's also extra weird. So when you have all this stuff on, you got stuff that keeps you from moving as well. Your boots don't allow a lot of dorsiflexion, right? You can't breathe very well. You have a mask on your face that feels like you got somebody squeezing the side of your face so it messes with your breathing. And then the valve in the, in the air actually is very, very different. It actually has a, almost a stall point for a second, causing your lungs to almost panic when you're not used to it. Now, the next thing that we have to talk about is heat. Heat is another huge issue and why I think most fire departments should use sauna training on a regular basis. Now, sauna training in the fire department has been shown in past articles and research to actually sweat out bad toxins after a fire. But I believe that there's more to the sauna than that. The sauna really is gonna help you be comfortable when you're uncomfortable. And that's the thing is like if you're used to being hot and kind of sweaty and uncomfortable, when you get in gear and get that way, you're not going to get nearly as much anxiety and you're going to be able to function better because you're used to being uncomfortable. The same holds true with the valve in the air. So when you're breathing, what you find is that if you're doing stuff that causes you to have labor breathing, like I really like to do kettlebell swings to the eye. We use this as a fitness test, but it also lets me know how good or how long these guys can fight in a bottle. If you notice when you swing a kettlebell, it almost hampers your breathing at the bottom because you have to tighten up to swing the other way, which is almost like being on a valve on air. So I find that the kettlebell, if guys are highly aerobically fit, they might do okay at the test, but their muscles give out first. And then guys that are super strong but don't train a lot of aerobic training, that gets limited because now they can't breathe. So the point is, it's a really good testing protocol that we use that I think helps to find out if the guys need more strength or more air. Now, the other thing that you're gonna to have to be very aware of is that most injuries from the fire department are gonna come from the posterior chain, meaning that the upper back rotator cuffs, uh, shoulder problems, uh, lower back and knee issues are all gonna be culprits of not having good posterior chain training. So if we look at some of these videos of what we actually have the fire department do, tons of reverse hypers, tons of 45 degree back extensions, tons of belt squatting. What this does is allows us to get insanely strong with reducing mileage. Now, there's a huge difference when you train fire departments versus training an average athlete. Now, let's look at an Olympic level athlete. They get good enough to be at the Olympics and they have to say a four year training cycle to be at the Olympics. And then after that, most people that go to the Olympics are retired. Okay, that's a pretty short career. Let's look at the average career of a fire department guy gets on at 22 to 24 and has to work till he's over 50. That means that the strength training that you use in order to get a fire department guy strong must be vastly different in approach. Why? The career is longer. Most career fire department guys are gonna to have to work 25 years. Now in this 25 year span, we wanna reduce or eliminate all injuries. How do we do that? We train insanely smart by using the exercises that we showed up here and below. This is where we have a huge divide against CrossFit and a lot of these other ways to train is because, as we know, injury rates in those are very high. They use highly complex exercises that could cause a lot of injury in them themselves. Okay, we wouldn't have a 40-year-old guy that's never really done a lot of athleticism type stuff do snatches. It's just, it's ridiculous. But you're, you're going to find that a lot in CrossFit, and that's why we try to stay away from CrossFit in our tactical units based on the fact that we want to lower injury rates. Now, 
again, if we were at developing fire departments and the guys only had to be good for four years and could retire, we might use a more advanced and harder system in order to train. Now, here's some results of this thought process. As we look and see these graphs here, we've noticed that in one year of training, traction-based training, we have dropped body fat percentage by significant amounts and increased strength by significant amounts, which is leading to lean mass. Now, if we look at some of these papers that we're showing here, lean mass is gonna reduce injury. So for every pound of muscle that we gain, we drop a percentage in how much we get injured. For every pound of body fat or percent body fat we lose, we start dropping the instances of cancer, diabetes, and all kinds of heart issues that are very, very common in the fire department field. So I hope this gives you a little bit of a, kind of an intro of what we do with the fire departments, why it's so important to be super strong. And lastly, guys, here's the deal. The average person's body weight's not getting any lower, okay? Even in the fire department test, we test with anywhere from 160 to 185 pound dummy. Well, that's great and all, except for the fact that probably half the kids in middle school weigh 160 to 180 pounds now. So if we were to go to average high school and average grocery store, the amount of 250 to 300 pound plus people that we're gonna run into is, a, is, a, is insane. It's almost crazy to think that there's that many people that weigh that much. So now imagine walking into that building, carrying 60 so pounds of extra weight, and then having to carry a 300 pound person out of a burning building. I personally would not wanna go into that situation and not be heavily trained. So stay tuned and go watch some of the other videos on the YouTube. A lot of this stuff, even if you're in the fire department, it looks like this is only for performance training or only for power thing. A lot of these different modalities and understandings can be used in a vast array of areas. I've trained mostly traction based to be a world-class powerlifter. So I know it works for that. We know it works for the fire departments based on the last 16 years of the data we've collected. So keep your mind open, try to get stronger, while you're getting fitter if you're in the fire service and see if that helps. If you guys need more help, contact us at winningstrength.com. We can help you with online coaching. We also do satellite assessments and things of that nature.